Hi and thanks for joining us again with another fragrance video. This time we're going to look at a 90s classic in a way, um, but one that doesn't get a lot of love in the fragrance community, doesn't get spoken about particularly often, and it's quite difficult to find in certain parts of the world. And it's the one you see, you see right in front of you there, it's Paco by Paco Rabanne. Now this fragrance came out back in 1995 and it's a citrus aromatic. Um, it's a unisex fragrance. At the time it was marketed along the same lines of CK1. Um, in the 90s there was sort of the whole sort of metrosexuality thing and um, you know women would use men's fragrances and so on and so forth and, and backwards and forwards. Um, so CK really sort of tapped into that market with one and they became like the, the big player. And this was um, sort of Paco Rabanne's offering, trying to really do something similar. Um, in my opinion, this is better than CK1, although there are um, obvious similarities. Um, they both do smell along the same sort of lines. I think this one, um, for me, is a bit more grown up. It's a bit more uh, refined than, uh, than CK1. It has also been compared to Azaro Chrome, which came out the year after in 2000, sorry, 1996. Um, although chrome is certainly more masculine. Um, whereas this, I'm just spraying it on my wrist as well, so I'm just having a smell there. Where this is more of a, um, you know, sort of all-round scent. Um, versatility, absolutely fantastic with this. You could wear this pretty much anywhere. It's not going to um, hurt anybody's nose. It would be a great office scent, um, but you could wear it, you know, pretty much anywhere um, at any time. Um... The original version of this, you may have noticed if you, you were aware of it back in the, the 90s, it used to be an all silver cam. They've now added this black bit. Um, that's been done when it's been reformulated at some point, probably during the 2000s, because I don't know a great deal about this fragrance history. Um, since the 1990s, I had it back in 1997 originally, um, when it was a silver one. First fragrance I ever owned. Um, didn't see this fragrance again for years. In fact, Probably from the late 90s, I didn't see this fragrance again until I bought this can in 2007 in a Spanish airport. So, coming on to the main notes. The main notes of this is Amalfi Lemon, Tea, Mandarin Orange and Pine. Certainly you get the lemon and the, the orange. I don't know if it's Amalfi or Lemon because Amalfi is a place in Italy. Lemon's lemon to me, but there you go. Um, but certainly you get that sort of citrus blast when it opens up. Then when it dries down, it does become a bit more... Um, you know, sort of greeny, kind of, you know, um, earthy-ish. That's probably the tea and the pine combination there um, coming through. Now, some people do say this fragrance smells a lot like air freshener. And it certainly does have kind of a cleaning product vibe to it when it first opens. But once you get past that opening, when it dries down, it is simply beautiful. Um, it's a great fragrance. And as we said before, the versatility is fantastic. Sillage, moderate, it's not... It's not a, a beast in any way, shape or form, but certainly it's not weak either. Um, in terms of longevity, well, longevity is sort of middle of the road. Um, possibly not as good as it was, or certainly not as good as I remember it being back in the 1990s, back when I was 15. Um, but then again, my memory could be fooling me. I would say the, the sort of longevity of this is four or five hours, maybe six, a push. Uh, maybe differ on your skin, but... Um, I would say that's sort of moderate, sort of six out of ten-ish. But you know, as I've said in you know, several of these videos, you can always take an atomizer and reapply them anyway. I tend to. Um, I tend to reapply fragrances about every four hours, because by then even sort of strong fragrances have died down, so topping them up's not really going to hurt. Um, so not to my nose, although my nose does get used to fragrances fairly quickly. Anyway, back to Paco Rabanne. Uh, or Paco by Paco Rabanne. Like I say, it's a very safe um, unisex fragrance. This probably could have been a, you know, an absolute um, sales monster if it hadn't been the fact that it came out so close to CK1 and was so close in terms of its um, smell and, you know, marketplace. Um, but for me, I do think it's a lot better than CK1. It's a shame that it hasn't um, had the popularity, but. Um, you can still pick this up. I was very surprised it's still in production. As I said before, I bought it in Spanish Airport. It only cost 20 euros. If you're in mainland Europe, you can probably pick this up you know, fairly easily. Um, where I live in the UK, you can get it pretty much nowhere. 
Um, I believe the same is in the in the US, exactly the same, you can't really buy it. But in Spain and France, it, it's floating around in certain shops. Um, if you see it, it's worth a purchase. It's, um, you certainly won't be disappointed. And like I say, you're probably only looking at about 20 euros, which is, in English money, about 16 pounds. So relatively cheap, I would say that's probably low 20s in dollars, maybe 22 dollars. Um, although the uh, exchange rate is up and down in all over the place at the moment. But uh, certainly one to look out for. And one that if you do have, not many other people are likely to have it. Um, and like I say, you can wear it anyway. So you'll certainly get your money's worth out of it anyway. That's it for now. Thank you for joining in. And um, well, look out for my other videos. And in the meantime, thank you.